Good morning. Welcome to worship at Pasadena Presbyterian Church. We're glad that you have found us in person or online through Facebook, YouTube, or the Arroyo channel. And we hope that you are nourished as we gather together and have our time together today. We welcome all of you who are joining us for the first time in person or online. No matter who you are, no matter where you come from, we are glad that you are worshiping with us today. All are welcome here. Our young adults will be meeting next Sunday after church for brunch. Uh, you can sign up for additional information by just giving me your email address. We have a Slack channel to help get everybody the information they need. Today, we're celebrating World Communion Sunday. And as you can see from the table, Christians will be gathering from around the globe to recognize the various ways we break bread together and share in one Lord's Supper. For those of you at home, this is a good time for you to get your bread or cracker and grape juice or juice of some kind so that you can participate in communion. And for those here, just let the ushers know and you can get your communion elements. Today also we collect our Peace and Global Witness Offering. A gift to the Peace and Global Witness Offering enables the church to promote the peace of Christ by addressing systems of conflict and injustice across the world. Individual congregations are encouraged by the Peace USA to utilize up to 25% of this offering to connect with the global witness of Christ's peace. Mid-councils, that would be like presbyteries and synods, retain an additional 25% for ministries of peace and reconciliation, and the remaining 50% is used by the Presbyterian Mission Agency to advocate for peace and justice in cultures of violence, including our own, through collaborative projects of education and Christian witness. I invite you now to stand as you are able to join us in our call to worship. From north and south and east and west, the mountains and the hills burst into song. Your steadfast love never ceases.
service is going. Lisa will say the words of institution. We will take the bread, we will take the cup, and in, do, in so doing, declare our oneness with the God of the universe. But on our own, we have no right to claim that oneness. God is perfect. We are not. Christ was sinless. We miss the mark on a regular basis. That is the reality of the human condition. But during this time, we confess that reality and the needs for God's forgiveness because in that confession and in that forgiveness together, we, the body of Christ, begin the journey to the oneness of God that we will celebrate as we take communion. In that spirit, please join me in the prayer of confession. Gracious Lord, you created the whole world and called it good. But we look out at your world and see division and suffering. You call us to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace, but we choose division over diversity, confrontation over civility, conflict over peace born from justice. You call us to love the least of these among us, but we hear the cries of the oppressed and choose our own comfort. We allow senseless suffering rather than sacrifice for our neighbors. Forgive us. Grant us fresh vision to see one another as siblings in Christ. Rekindle us your, your gifts, the spirit of power, love, and self-discipline, that with faith in Christ, we might be made new and be part of bringing forth your peaceable kingdom. Let us continue our confession in silence. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. The epistle of 1 John tells us that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That is the good news of the gospel. Believe the good news. We've confessed, we've been forgiven, we've been reconciled to the God of the universe. We've also been reconciled to each other, made in the image of the God of the universe. Let's celebrate that reconciliation now by sharing the peace of Christ with one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let's pass the peace with one another wherever you are. Do a shout out on Facebook or YouTube, or if you're in the sanctuary, you know what to do.
please join with me in the prayer for illumination. Eternal God, quiet within us all mortal voices, that through the word and by the power of your Holy Spirit, we may have the same mind that was in Christ Jesus, in whose name we pray, amen. The first reading for today is from the prophet Habakkuk, chapter one, verses one through four, and chapter two, verses one through four. Hear the word of God. The oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw. O Lord, how long shall I cry for help, and you will not listen, or cry to you violence, and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me, strife and contention arise, so the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous, therefore judgment comes forth perverted. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come, it will not delay. Look at the proud, their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faithfulness. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our gospel lesson this morning is from the gospel according to Luke, the 17th chapter, verses 5 through 10. Listen for the word of God. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry bush, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it would obey you. 
Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing and tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later, you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what is commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The images of the devastation in Florida are heart-wrenching. Over the past two weeks, major hurricanes have uprooted trees, homes, and lives in Canada, Puerto Rico, Cuba, Florida, and the eastern coast of the United States. Our hearts go out to the people who are dealing with these disasters and we will find ways to help and support them as they recover. But it is never the same when you lose everything and you have to start over. And it is especially difficult if you live on the financial margins. We've seen what happened in New Orleans following Katrina. Those with the means rebuild. Those who live on the margins are not able to return. And there are still neighborhoods in New Orleans that are struggling after so many years. And in Puerto Rico, where they never recovered from Maria, Ian made things worse. Floods and severe weather on the East Coast diamet diametrically oppose the devastation of drought and fire on the West Coast. Here, people find themselves burned out of their homes, their livelihoods, and their retirement. The wealthy and the insured will rebuild, but others will have to resettle and redefine their lives. And so we find ourselves like Habakkuk, crying out that destruction and violence are before us, it surrounds us, and we cannot escape it. In Europe, Russia continues to attack the Ukraine, and strife and contention arise. In our courts, people on the right and the left yell out that the law is slack and justice does not prevail. Everywhere we look, there is death, destruction, violence, and injustice, and the people cry out, where is God? We cry out. Where is God for the family with no home left? Where is God for the mother who mourns a son who died on foreign soil? Where is God for the father whose daughter is denied access to health care? Where is God for the parents whose child and grandchild die at the hands of domestic violence? Where is God? On this World Communion Sunday, we seem to be a world in communion in our suffering. It was true in Habakkuk's day, and it is true today. The world cries out, where are you, God? How long must we suffer? And we perceive that there is silence. We believe that there is silence. But the stones shout out that God has not abandoned us. The tablets contain the vision, and we continue to pray every week, thy kingdom come. Until that time, then, how do we carry on? Prior to our gospel lesson today, Jesus told his disciples that there are many things that will cause them to fall away from following him. <clears throat> he told them that the world is filled with things that make us believe that God is not there, that God does not care, that God does not love us. He reminded them and us that temptation abounds and that we have a responsibility to help each other avoid that temptation, the temptation to give up on God, 
the temptation to take what we can from others, the temptation to live only for ourselves and for our personal gain. In addition, he told them, and he tells us, that when someone hurts you and they repent, you must forgive them. Now, this is not Jesus telling us to forgive based on an insincere apology. Abuse is abuse. Saying, I'm sorry, does not change the abuse. This is about repentance and actual changing of ways. In this case, Jesus asks us to respond in love and forgiveness. It is forgiving in such a way that you are able to untangle yourself and be free physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. The forgiveness is only for a true change, and it does not require returning to abuse. So how do we avoid temptation? How do we forgive in light of all that seems to be wrong in this world? How do we manage? The disciples felt that more faith could help them. They believed that they did not have enough faith to avoid temptation, enough faith to correct each other, enough faith to forgive the repentant. And so they asked Jesus to help them And in their desire to not hurt others or be hurt themselves, they begged for an increase in faith. Surely, with great faith is the ability to avoid temptation as Jesus avoided temptation in the wilderness. Surely, with great faith is the ability to help your fellow follower get back on the right path. Surely, with great faith is the ability to forgive. But Jesus responded by telling them, They have enough faith. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, he said, you have enough faith. Jesus tells us it is not great faith that we need. We're all equipped with enough faith, and that faith stems from our ability to have trust in our capacity to be faithful to God and to one another. All we have to do is trust in God and God is great enough to change the world. Jesus told them, and he is telling us, that if we want to increase our faith, we just need to have faith in a God who does great things. Now, it's easy to stop the lesson at that point, and I would like to, because having great faith in a great God is a good thing. But the rest of the lesson is really, really hard. It's in that following story that we learn about how to serve God, where Jesus tells the disciples that we serve God and not the other way around. Basically, he tells us our purpose is only to serve God. Our responsibility is to follow the law of God, to love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, and soul, and our neighbor, as ourselves. That is what faithfulness is all about. As followers of the Christ, no one is better than another. No one has greater faith than another. We all just need the smallest amount of faith to serve God. And in that serving and working with one another, we connect and change the world. This is a hard lesson. We want to be recognized individually for our ability. We want to be more than just servants or slaves. We want to be giants of faith. We want to be spectacular. We want to move mountains and change the world order. But Jesus says, all you need to do is just do your work. Trust in the faith that you have been given, been given, and it has been breathed into you. And let God do the spectacular. So it is in those moments when we serve without a need for recognition, when we are faithful even in the midst of all that is wrong in the world, when we live with love for all people and all God's creation, it is in those moments that the world shifts and great things happen. This is how the world changes. A teacher says a word of encouragement to a child who receives none at home, and that child finds hope. A nurse calms a patient with words of care and concern, and that patient finds peace. 
A rescue worker is diligent in searching for people who may have been left behind in a storm, and a family is found. A stranger notices that the person in front of her at the checkout comes up short to pay for the groceries, and she covers the tab, giving a mother enough food for her children. A community joins together, and a nation provides support to help families reuni reunite with their pets, devastated areas rebuild, and communities stabilize and restart. That is the work of faith that shifts the world. It is in noticing, it is in caring, it is in sharing, it is in doing what we are called to do with the gifts and skills that we have been given. And in doing that, our faith grows and the world becomes a better place. We don't need more faith. We only need the smallest amount of faith and trust in a great God to help change the world. Today, as we prepare to gather around the table, we, will, we see bread and chalices and cloth from around the world. We've sung songs from around the world, a visible and aural reminder that on this day, Christians break bread and share a cup that stretches from east to west and north to south. The world is not a peaceful place. There is violence, there is injustice, there is strife, and there is contention. There's devastation, there is disaster, there is disease, and there is sorrow. But in the midst of all of this, we gather at a common table and share a common meal. On this day, the righteous live by faithfulness, knowing that God is with us, asking that we only love, and then God will carry us through. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able as we affirm our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
be in the spirit of prayer. God of peace, we come in prayer seeking your promise of a peace that passes understanding. When we look at the world, we see signs of hope, but way too often we see heartache and hopelessness, violence and vitriol and war. We see ever more powerful missiles launched, killing ever larger numbers of innocents. We see nations annexing parts of other nations. We see nations attempting to impose their will and their way where they are not wanted. We know that you are here with us, and as we grieve for the world's suffering, we know you grieve for the world's suffering. But how long, Lord, until you transform our sadness into hope, our frustration into action, and pour forth your peace into a world so desperate for peace. God of righteousness, you came that we might have life and have it abundantly. We pray for those whose circumstances seem to preclude that abundance. We pray for those who are lost and lonely, for those who are suffering, sick and scared, for those of Puerto Rico and Cuba and Florida and Canada and the Carolinas whose abundance has been interrupted by hurricanes. We pray for those in war-torn countries and divided lands, for all who have been caught in violence, whose abundance has been crushed by unspeakable horror and violence. We pray for those who seek a small piece of the abundance that many of us enjoy, for the homeless and food insecure in our city and in our nation. Help our church to continue to offer programs that minister to the least of these who you have put on our doorstep. Help us to trust that your mercies are new every morning from the smallest mustard seed of faith. Stir in your people, in this place, the will and the strength to be part of your righteous transformation of our minds and of our world. God of justice, help us to do justice, not just hope for or wish for justice, to love kindness as we seek to walk humbly with you. Help us to see with new eyes the new possibilities that you give us for relationship and restoration. Embolden and strengthen us not only to see, but to act. Empower us to be instruments of making a world whose systems and structures serve everyone, not just the well-connected, but also the poor, the hungry, the homeless, who are equally made in your image. Help us bring in a world where racism and hate are replaced by reconciliation, where abject poverty is a footnote in history and not the reality for so many. We pray for a world where justice and joy are in abundant supply. Give us a heart for meaningful ministry to our sisters and brothers in Christ who are sick and imprisoned, hungry and thirsty, naked and lonely. In our love of neighbor, open our eyes to see your presence among us. God of joy, we come in prayer seeking you as the rain pours down from the heaven and waters the earth. So may your word spring forth as our source of justice and joy. As the mountains and hills burst into song, so may we always give praise and glory to you as all creation bears witness to your goodness. So may we bear witness to the image of God in one another that image that you created and called very good. As the trees of the field clap their hands at your mighty acts, so may our hands clap for joy when your justice, joy, abundance, and peace reign in this world. For all these things we pray through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. Before we do the offering, we have an announcement from Dr. Howard about a special Friends of Music event. Thank you, Myron. And before I actually make that announcement, I want to comment that many of you may have noticed that the hymnody in today's service was a little different than we usually do at Pasadena Presbyterian Church. And I wanted to let you know that that was intentional, that for this World Communion Sunday, Pastor Lisa and I kind of went out of our way to find hymnody that expressed Christianity and faith 
through a wide variety of worldwide cultures. So there, now to the announcement. This Saturday is the first Friends of Music concert of a brand new season. It says on the postcard that you may have seen out in the narthex, and there's tons of them, so you can pick some up and take them and distribute them to your friends. Celtic music, Joyce Pan Fiddle, David Axe Cello with Julia Axe Vocalist. If you have ever heard the joy of Celtic fiddle playing, you are going to love this concert. And if you've never really experienced that, you're still going to love this concert. Joyce Pan is a classically trained player of violin, and David Axe, who was one of my faculty colleagues at Cal State Northridge for many years, is a classically trained cellist. And together, they discovered Celtic playing. And they play as a duo that, in, in a style that is just phenomenal. And they're here for us this Saturday night, right here at PPC, October 8th at 7.30 p.m. It's free. Please come. Please bring all of your friends. Did I mention there are postcards out there for you to take and distribute to your friends? Hope to see you all here. Thank you. Every generous act of giving is itself a gift from God above. You may give at our PayPal portal on our online giving page or by sending a check to the church or dropping something in one of the donation boxes. And we thank you. Please join with me as we pray to dedicate this offering. Lord of life, you promise abundant life to all who live together in Christ. 
We offer these gifts as a sign of our desire to share our resources for the common good and building of your kingdom. We humbly ask that you use them to strengthen our unity and deepen our witness and healing presence in this needy world. Amen. Christ's table is wide and his welcome is for all. Jesus dined with sinners and saints, with farmhands and foreigners, with disciples and doubters, with children and cherished friends, with the outcast and the outspoken, with lepers and loved ones. And just as he ate at others' tables when Christ set his banquet table, he welcomed us all too. As we gather around Christ's table, we are united with all of God's beloved across the world through the love and grace made known in bread broken and cup passed. So come to the table where we witness Christ's love and peace for all. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, God of all creation, for the blessing of your earth and all your children, for the mercies you pour forth in fresh rains and harvests of plenty, for joy that comes in the morning. We are a grateful people. You created a world of harmony and peace, but our yearning for power and privilege throughout history led to division and conflict, suffering and violence. We give thanks that you sent prophets and poets to lament and remind, to bear witness and call us to yet a better way, to write the vision of a peaceable kingdom for all to see. With fresh eyes and renewed hope, we join our voices with those around the world and with your heavenly chorus to sing. We give you thanks that in the fullness of time you sent your son Jesus to bear witness to your mercy, grace, and love. In his living, he showed us how to love. In his dying, he offered us undeserved mercy. In his rising, he granted us grace. Through the gift of faith, even faith as small as a mustard seed, his witness rekindles in us the gifts of God not so that we can hold on to these gifts for ourselves, but so that we can be united across the globe as one family of faith gathered around one table, sharing in one holy meal, sustained by a love that binds us together in peace. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon our many tables, trusting that Christ is the host of our sacred meal together. May the blessing of grain from the earth and fruit of the vine be a reminder of the true joy of communion that unites us in one worldwide covenant of love. Sustained by your word, fed by this holy meal, may we go out with joy and be led forth in peace through Christ who is our peace. Amen. Together, let us pray as Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord took bread, and after he blessed it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup, and he said, this cup is the new covenant of my blood. Every time you drink of it, do it in remembrance of me. The bread which we break is our communion in the body of Christ. The cup of blessing which we bless is our communion in the blood of Christ. Take, eat, and remember. Take, drink, and remember. Come, let us eat one of the pieces bread. Come, let us eat one of the pieces bread. Our Lord's body, let us take together. Our Lord's body, let us take together. Drink together. Jesus, blood, Lord, let us drink together. In Jesus' presence now we meet and rest. In Jesus' presence now we meet and rest. In the presence of our Lord we gather. In the presence of our Lord we gather. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the love which you bring us as food from heaven in the life of your dear Son. We praise you that through him you assure us that we belong to the company of all his faithful people in heaven and on earth. Grant that strengthened by this fellowship and by the power of his Holy Spirit, we may continue his work in the world until you come in glory to establish your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ we pray, amen. <laughs>
We all start out with faith as small as a mustard seed, but mustard seeds, once they are planted, grow roots that connect with the earth and with each other, grow limbs into the sky that help to find a place of home and rest for the animals and birds and for reptiles as well. We are interconnected, our faith grows, and in our growing, we reach out into the world and we say this suffering is not forever. So let us do what we can with what we have because that is all that God requires of us. And now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the power and presence of the Holy Spirit be with you in your homes, in this place, and wherever you go in God's wide world. Amen.